Okay, this video is dental amalgams, Wi-Fi, um, cell phones, MRI, and mercury. How are all these things related? Well, the first slide here is about the effect of Wi-Fi devices on release of mercury from dental amalgams. So dental amalgams were used to treat cavities are 50% mercury. And it now turns out when exposed to a Wi-Fi device, they do emit an increased amount of mercury compared to their baseline. So in this study, they took teeth that were actually already extracted from humans, put them in an artificial saliva, and they <clears throat> exposed them to Wi-Fi. Here's a picture showing what they did. They were rather close to the Wi-Fi router, only 30 centimeters away. There's about 2.5 uh, centimeters in an inch. So that's you know not much more than 10 inches. Let's say about 12 inches. That's what it is, 12 inches. So that's very close to the router. And there is such a thing as the inverse square rule, meaning that the farther away one is, the much lower is the radiation exposure, if you will. So in a sense, a Wi-Fi microwave-like radiation is like a type of radiation. It's a radio frequency radiation. Okay, but still, the significance of Wi-Fi, of course, is people are exposed to it all day long. In this experiment, when they were 12 inches away, they basically doubled the amount of mercury released from the dental amalgams. So there's things that you can do to prevent it. Well, I'll talk about that probably in a future talk um, I had all these techniques and I was interested in, in measuring these sorts of things, but my kids said, no, 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 dad, that's too much for this audience. They're going to think you're weird. They're going to think you're nuts. I'm like, you don't understand. We're old people. We're not so conformity, peer pressure conscious as you. Okay. And we're smarter than the average knuckleheads you hang around with. Okay. But anyways, I don't got time for that in this talk, but I'll still show you a bunch of interesting stuff. All right. So here then was the issue with, um, mercury, uh, amalgams. Um, and stannous fluoride. So just the fluoride in toothpaste is thought to increase, been shown in some papers, to increase the corrosion of amalgams. That's another reason people with amalgams shouldn't brush directly over their molars because they could be stirring up some of this amalgam. Basically, to clean particulate material off their teeth, number one, they could eat things that don't cause particulate material on their teeth. Number two, they could um, just chew something like an apple, which will clean their teeth off if they had stuff sticking in their teeth from a sticky thing like a cereal, for example. Other foods don't tend to stick to the, uh, the teeth. So anyways, that's rather interesting. The fluoride seems to do it and brushing on top of the teeth seems to do it. Interesting. And the, the amalgams are the main thing that re releases um, mercury into a person's mouth um, in most people. And people who eat fish, it's the fish. Fish has tons of mercury. I think fish is like the one of the stupidest things you could eat. I told you in the past about that book by Jane Hightower, an internal medicine doctor out by the San Francisco Bay. She had all these demented yuppies. Nobody knew what was wrong with them. She started testing them for mercury, and they were all, because they were eating fish, had high mercury levels. She stopped the fish, and their mercury levels came down, and most of them improved, but some of them had persistent death, uh, neurologic problems. Okay, corrosion of metallic biomaterials. Here's the paper. Here's the, art, the, the statement from it. Again, corrosion. Uh, due to fluoride treatments like in dental cleaning procedures. <laughs> you don't need to put F- minus in your mouth, okay? And you remember the nitric oxide issue with, uh, you know, being toxic to the bacteria on the top of the tongue, which convert the nitrates from plant foods into nitrites. Then they go to the stomach and they're converted to nitric oxide. I have a whole separate lecture on nitric oxide and all that. But the point is, you don't need mouthwash. I don't even use toothpaste. I just brush my teeth with a plain brush to get off biofilms in which bacteria could live. I haven't been to a dentist in 25 years. My teeth are fine. About 25 years ago, before that, I had gone to the dentist and I didn't like it. That's why I read all this stuff about dentistry so I could avoid it the rest of my life. Okay, a couple other things about amalgams and mercury. It turns out if you put a person into an MRI magnet, that they will give off some increased amounts of mercury from their dental amalgams. And that includes in the static magnetic field or the baseline matic, and then the perpendicular radio frequency gradient fields that are used as part of obtaining an image. With an MRI magnet, basically, imagine this orange thing being a person. They're actually be laying sideways, but the net magnetic vector of their protons within the MRI magnet is gonna be 90 degrees relative to baseline. And then what happens during an MRI is perpendicular gradient fields tip it down to zero, and then it recovers at a variable rate depending on the type of tissue. That's what MRI is, okay? 
And so the point is those gradient fields also contribute to the radio frequency exposure of an MRI magnet. And the amount of, MRI, of radio frequency a person gets during a regular single MRI exam is, is really minimal and it's not significant, I don't believe, clinically with regard to these mercury amalgams. However, I wonder if it's significant if somebody's an MRI technologist working in that room all day. They're not in the main magnet, but they're close enough to it in their uh, work panel. That's an interesting subject, topic for another day, but if I was an MRI tech, I would be curious about that. Okay, what else did this article have to show? Okay, um, it showed that with cell phones, cell phones, just talking 15 minutes, doubled the amount of mercury in the saliva from uh, 2.76 baseline to 4.5, virtually about a doubling of the amount of mercury in saliva from talking on a cell phone. I, I don't think you should be talking on a cell phone up to your face. I know most people do, but most people are stupid, okay? You should not be talking with a cell phone on your face. Use a speaker phone, okay? Unless it's some special emergency, um, I think that's a stupid thing to be doing because you're also getting some Wi-Fi-like exposure, some microwave. Low, cell phones tended to be low-power microwaves in the past. They're starting to make different types of them, but still, I wouldn't be holding that up to your brain and to your, your amalgams if you got them. Um, so I thought that was rather interesting. So the more this article was about both MRI and cell phone, and both of them increased... Uh, mercury release some amalgams in a person's mouth. And of course, then they swallow some of that mercury and it's, some of it's absorbed into their body. And mercury is a neurotoxin, it's a kidney toxin, it's toxic in a bunch of ways. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, more information. Here's the mercury saliva uh, test when they had the MRI. So basically, here's the baseline in front, the darker bars, and then the posterior lighter bars showing that it basically increased mercury in almost every single patient. Here is the cell phone data. I use red for the MRI stuff, and I use blue for the um, cell phone data. Green is the controls. So again, at four days, it was basically an approximate doubling of the amount of mercury being released just after a 15-minute conversation on a cell phone. I thought that was interesting. Okay, now we're moving to a different paper, but the same sort of topic. They would put patients in different types of MRI magnets. T is for Tesla strength. And basically, seven Tesla is much stronger than three Tesla. Conventional diagnostic MRI magnets, like people usually get uh, their MRIs in, are typically 1.5 Tesla. Okay, but the relevance of this paper is the stronger the baseline static field, three Tesla or seven Tesla, the more mercury was released. Okay, so there is a, a dose response curve is what one would predict. Okay, in addition, the RF power, that means the perpendicular gradient fields, what I was talking about for tipping the main net proton vector down the baseline, that also corresponded to the higher that was, the more um, the more mercury was released from the amalgam. So again, that's more relevant to a tech. So what am I saying from all this? If one tech is working in a baseline field of 1.5 Tesla, they're going to have much less um, mercury leaking from their amalgams probably than if they're working around three Tesla or even much worse if they're working around a seven Tesla, more powerful MRI magnet, baseline static field. So that's interesting. Okay, let's uh, close this up with a couple key points. Amalgams contain a lot of mercury, about 50%. And that's also why they say Matt is a hatter for the old furriers that worked with mercury in hats. And a lot of dentists are kind of crazy, if you haven't noticed, impulsive and kind of emotional and kind of like drama queens. And so if they're working for mercury day after day, year after year, they're exposed to a lot of it. Okay, um, <clears throat> increased corrosion if you brush over them with toothpaste. Um, probably not a good idea to brush over your amalgams. If you get something on your teeth and it's sticky and you want to clean your teeth so you don't get new cavities, you can just eat an apple to clean them off. Um, amalgam papers. Oh, another weird thing. One of the things I showed you in that first slide was that there was no abstract. <clears throat> Whenever let's say the big corporations are trying to hide something from you. That's been my experience because I search the medical literature a lot. There'll be no abstract. So what they want, what they're basically saying is, you know, piss off. We don't want you to know the truth about this item. All right. Because if something has a findings that are favorable to corporations, they will make sure that article, the entire thing is available free. Okay. They want everyone to see it. All right. But when there's something that corporations don't want, the regular people to know about, like the fact that fluoride increases the rate of um, mercury release from dental amalgams. Oh, no abstract. You just see a title for the article, and then you have to search around. A lot of times, if you search around, you can somewhere find it, but it's hard to find it. Um, 
just even chewing something hard could potentially have a little bit of an effect. I don't know for sure that that's just theoretical. Um, like maybe they shouldn't be chewing hard things on those amalgams. Probably not. Um, use a speakerphone all the time with a cell phone to protect uh, from mercury leak from amalgams. Um, like you said, MRI is a rare event, except te technologists or MRI technologists are in there all day. It's also real loud. I would worry for an MRI tech if they have hearing problems after working in that loud machines for years. Okay, cell phones are easily improvable by using a speakerphone or better yet, use a landline. I like the old days of landline telephones. I think these cell phones are totally overrated. People love their phones so much. I think they're stupid. They're like an animal tracker. It tracks you everywhere you go. Uh, I think they're kind of like an insult to one's intelligence. Why would you want to bullshit around with a little thing the size of your hand when you can look at a giant computer screen? Unless you're on the move, on the go, but... Anyways, um, Wi-Fi, the exposure is chronic, but ideally, in some places, you could turn your Wi-Fi off at night. And really, you know, this experiment was close, 12 inches away. If in, in real life, you can move much farther away from the Wi-Fi, and um, you can dramatically, dramatically lower that dose based on this inverse square rule. Like I showed you, it's a much, distance is your friend, Okay. You can buy devices to test radio frequency emissions from these different devices. I did a whole bunch of that years ago when I first bought my house and I wanted to make sure everything was good for the kids. And so I tested all this stuff. That's a whole topic for another lecture. I tested every device in the house. I tested all the different routes that I would drive to work, you know, the different power lines, what they gave out. That's a whole different subject. But all I'm saying, what's the big point to learn from this lecture? If you got amalgams, you don't want to be brushing over them, especially not with F minus toothpaste. Um, and don't sit close to your router. Those are probably the two biggest points from this lecture. All right, I hope that was interesting and helpful.